It's the NFL on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the NFC South. It's the Dirty Birds and the Buccaneers, next on Madden Football. Still a bit warm here in Florida, but really all things considered, a wonderful fall afternoon for football here in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. Today we've got an NFC South matchup as it'll be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, the vibe, a different one here in Tampa this year. This is year 1AB after Brady. What can they do to help soften the blow? I would say try and lean on the defense a little bit more. I think they'll play a lot better in 2023. We know how exotic they can be with how they get after the quarterback. Make sure they slow people down running the ball as well. Give this offense a chance to grow because they are under new management. And then for the visiting Falcons, a lot of people very eager to see the number eight pick in the draft, and that's B. John Robinson. And he's a guy I would have taken earlier in the draft. I go against the old adage, you don't take a running back in the first round. When you have one this skilled, this talented, who can run it and catch it, and run your offense through him, you take him as the Falcons did. the former Illini kicker Chase McLaughlin to get us started and off we go from Tampa taken at the goal line sheds off the tackle and a good return able to get out across the 35 to the 36 the Falcons ready to go to work here on offense and at the helm in his second season Charles it's Desmond Ritter the Falcons got their feet wet with Ritter during a four-game audition last season, and he did end their year with a pair of wins. Optimism reigns that he is their quarterback of the future. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Ritter now to throw on their first play. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. The offense schemed going five wide, trying to create a chance for the big shot, and they took it. If he comes down with that one, that's a huge offensive swing, but credit the defense with a nice play, knocking that one away. Now the first running back taken back in April, the former Longhorn, B. John Robinson. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. 17 yards and a first down for Atlanta. That's a very nice game there, a confidence-building run. Love the execution up front and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. Back to Robinson now on first down. And he'll work down inside the 45. From the 44-yard line, here's second down at seven. They'll run again here with Robinson. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. Well, now, after all of this, hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Opening carry of the game for Cordero Patterson. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it, an eyelash dropped at the one. 
A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. So back-to-back -back big runs picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Patterson will score. Touchdown Atlanta. And they do exactly what they wanted to. Opening drive, they get into the end zone. They do it on the ground. And not only is the person lugging the ball happy, of course, because he got it into the end zone. How about the offensive linemen and receivers who are blocking for him? They have to feel great about themselves. Stick it in the end zone on a running play. Extra point attempt to follow here. It's good, and that gives the Falcons a 7 to nothing lead. A drive that time of six plays, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. The former number one overall pick has had his ups and downs in recent seasons, but he finished strong last year and inherits a really good offense in Tampa that should set him up for success. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 19 yard line. Now a third round pick a year ago. Here's Rashad White. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Some teams like to start aggressive to begin a drive, but this is still what you expect to see in normal situations. Just call a simple run, get a few yards and begin the series, and set yourself up for something bigger on second down. From the 22 now, here's second down and seven. From the gun, Mayfield. And that went to the right side and incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Here's Mayfield. That is caught and past the 40 before he's out of bounds. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot. And they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Mayfield on first down. And his throw is incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Here's second and ten. Play fake, Mayfield. Throw left side is complete on the diving effort. The Bucks passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. Hey, did you have one of those backyards that you had one of those like 
mats or pits like you have for high jumpers. And you know, you had your friends throw the ball and you tried to make the spectacular catches. I didn't need a mat. <laughs> you, you just did it with the ground? Absolutely. That explains your Concrete. toughness. That <laughs> explains your toughness right there because I think that guy was raised just like you. What a catch. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Back to back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. From the red zone now, Mayfield. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Facing a second and three, ball on the 10. Now a give up the middle. This is White, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great, because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. On third down, Mayfield, and that is incomplete. The third down battle won by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And this one is right through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And Patterson will not return it. It comes out to the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. He would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. The Ritter back to throw. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. Nice play by Vea. One of the biggest names and biggest players in the NFL and someone who took big strides as a pass rusher last season. A nice campaign with six and a half sacks and plays the run oh so well. Ritter to throw it. And this will be incomplete. What a sequence there defensively. You get the sack to move him to the Then here, just nothing available. And he's got to throw it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw, Ritter. Flush to his right, and that'll be incomplete with a penalty flag here on the field. And I'm not sure he was still behind the line when he let that thing go. 
So since that last play got nothing, they'll go ahead and decline the penalty, and that forces a fourth down situation. down Bradley Pinion on to punt for the Falcons back deep for the Bucks is Devin Tompkins and he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky so possession goes over here on the punt and the Bucks will get ready to go on offense Tampa Bay they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive and last time they got three points but it was a chip shot field goal and when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal maybe the offense not too happy it's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. First down, Mayfield. The pass is caught by Kate Otten. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. This second and four. Mayfield looks to throw. Quick throw, fighting Mike Evans. And Evans will have a box first down as he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight and moves the chains. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Throwing, Mayfield, that's complete to his receiver, Gadwin. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On second down, they'll run with White. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. Good, strong run against the 3-4 set. And that 3-4, you've got to have you guys up front eat up a lot of blocks. The guy playing over the center that knows, he usually has to take on double teams. But when you're able to successfully move him, you're often able to get some yardage. And that's when linebackers have to clean up and make tackles. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. A good chunk on the ground on the keeper. 17 yards, first down. position himself as the leader in the backfield moving forward. They go right back to White here on first down. And the ball is knocked out, and the Falcons grab it, and they will take over at the 29-yard line. Do you remember in preseason we were going to the different training camps and visiting teams, and we always would see the running backs working out and going through those gauntlet drills, yep. and, you know, guys either slapping at the ball or the machines? you got to learn to take care of it. Yeah, they lost it there. Big fumble. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Ritter and the Falcons now with a first and 10. Just shy of the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. Yes. 
Ritter off to play fake. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. They'll run with Patterson. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. So right after the defense gets you the ball on a takeaway on a fumble recovery of their own, you've got to reward them, don't you? You've got to stay out on the field, give them a chance to rest, and how about doing it the way they did it, running the football and picking it up on third down. Yeah, would not have wanted to go three and out. They avoid that right there. Yeah, they avoided the glares as they went back to the bench, didn't they? Smart decision by Ritter, sliding down, and he's got the first. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised as we just saw there. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. Patterson running between the tackles down to about the 37. From the 37, they work on second and six. Ritter now looking to throw it this time. And his throw here is incomplete. Drake London, his intended target, and it's third down. Obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. So on fourth down, Ritter heads to the sideline. Young Way Koo gets set for the Atlanta field goal. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. Koo knocks this one through the post. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when oh, they only gave up the field yeah. goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field to start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punch in the end zone without turning it over. And he's taken down but able to 
slip across the 35. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. With these run pass options, we often talk about a good quarterback and running back. Well, having a talented wide receiver helps also. Yeah, even coming in third in the discussion, sometimes that means he really should be first because all you want to do is get the ball in their hands and let them make the big plays downfield. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 10-3 our score after one here on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they've got it with a first and 10. They keep it on the ground, white again. Nifty move, and he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. There's so many definitions of a complete back. I think most people think a guy who can block, a guy who can catch, and a guy who can run. But how about when you put it all together as a runner, and you can fake people out, you can be shifty, and also run with some power and break tackles, as we just saw on that pickup. Mayfield off the play fake. That is caught. It's Chris Gatwood. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 14. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They run straight ahead here with White. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Big Calais Campbell fighting through to make the play in the backfield. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working, but how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. Now Mayfield. He finds his target, it's Evans. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. Mayfield to throw it. And that is incomplete. The third down battle won by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. Tight defense there on third down, but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range, no sense forcing anything, and he made sure he didn't. And his kick is right there. It's good, and that'll bring him back with a four. So the margin shrinks a bit as back-to-back -back drives here for him in with field goals. Yeah, we know no one's turning down three, especially in the first half, but you got to finish these drives in the end zone. That's got to be a priority. Nice to have a reliable kicker, but outside of his agent, you know you'd rather him kick one-pointers instead of three-pointers. to the main field goal. Here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. At the 
Here's a second and five now from the 25. Option play. Here's Robinson. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That good for 19 and a first down. We really didn't have any doubt that he was going to be one of the top-rated rookies coming into the league, especially as a runner. And he's given us no reason to change our minds. That's a big-time run, and the production that he showed us in college is translating very well into the National Football League. First down, here's Ritter. It's caught inside the 25. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Robinson, he'll try the left side. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. Last play went for over 30 yards. This one not quite as big, but still over 20. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. Keith Smith punching it in from a yard away. And the Falcons had six to their lead. And when the smaller guy can't power it across the goal line, Charles, sometimes you need to go with a fullback. They did. It worked. What's that thing about force and mass? How's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Force equals mass times acceleration. Oh, that's big time stuff. That's, that's from the same guy the apple dropped on his head, right? <laughs> Ku able to connect on the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe someday to press it a little bit. This might be the case. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw taken in by Evans here. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. To throw Mayfield. And he comes back with one complete. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. And that's 
that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 36. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 36. On the handoff, it's White. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Just need a yard here, second and one. Here's Mayfield. be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go, and it's going to bring up a third down. It's always tough trying to keep your guy upright when he's trying to throw the football. When you're dealing with those big bad guys on the defensive front, it's even tougher. And this time, those guys on the opposite side won the battle, getting to the quarterback and knocking him into an incompletion. On third and one, here's Mayfield. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there. And they pick up the first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Play fake, Mayfield. And in for the Buccaneers, touchdown. Chris Godwin from 21 yards away. And the Buccaneers have cut it back within a score. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that'll make it 17-13. Touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. From his end zone, here comes Patterson. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. And Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time. How Charles, remember, they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. Off the play fake, it's Ritter. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Levante David. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. That throw, Charles, in the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. Following 
throwing the interception, Mayfield. A quick throw there is incomplete. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. From the 21, it's second and 10. They go play action. Mayfield. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. The offense on third down, they've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and 10. Mayfield. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And he's going to be stopped well short of what he needed as the tackle is made at the 18-yard line. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And that'll bring him back within a point. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, Parker. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Well, the Falcons back out getting set for this next drive. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. So from the 26-yard line, here's the second and eight. Again, it's Robinson. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. will try to pick it up and he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. And that's why he spent a first round draft pick on a running back. Not for just the fancy runs but these dirty gritty third and ones third and twos. That's why you draft him. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Ritter. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. Second down throw coming for Ritter. This is to Pitts on the quick slant. And Pitts is going to pick up a Falcons first down as he'll take this up close to midfield. It's a gain of eight, and it'll wind up moving the chains. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Ritter will set up to throw it. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. 
another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Ritter now. His throw incomplete. Drake London, the intended receiver there. And it'll bring up third down. Third down, here's Patterson. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for a first down for the Falcons. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence. And you're right, they need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. On first down, Ritter. Got this complete to the tight end pits. And that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 33-yard line. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Ritter now on second down. from the gun, Ritter. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Falcons first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. Ritter on first and ten. They'll get this into the hands of Hodge. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Here now, second and four. Now Ritter back to throw. Steps away to his, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. Ritter and the Falcons need an answer and a big play here on third and long following the sack. They'll set up to throw. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And that drive's going pretty darn well. Three previous times converted on third down, but on that one, the defense rose up and said enough of that. So on fourth down, Ritter heads to the sideline. Young Way Koo gets set for the Atlanta field goal. He hit his first, now this from 43. Koo knocks this one through the post. And they add on and get a little bit of a cushion. It's 20 to 16 now. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. Maybe time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. Now a hit and a loose football. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. 
so a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a couple of high-octane offenses getting it done in the first half. Both teams had no problems moving the football. And you have to think, the team whose defense shows up in the second half is going to be the one who walks out of here with a victory. So a four-point game here as we get set to resume action in this third quarter of play. Take it at about the one. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Get a look at receiver Chris Godwin as this offense returns for their next drive. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but... Hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. A run to begin the second half with White. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. They stay on the ground with White. And some room to run now. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. 69 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. As always, no rooting interest here, but that was pretty, wasn't it? To see him break through and then pick up his stride. Yeah, the guy carrying the ball loves it. I think the O-line, they might like and take more satisfaction out of those runs than anybody else, though, right? Without a doubt, because they're the ones that often have created it. First down, here's White. And a fast footwork by White. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily. Break a few tackles. Gain some additional yardage. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. From the 20, here's the second and five. Mayfield on play action. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time, and it's third and five. Now Mayfield. He'll get that out to the flat to White. And he is going to have a box first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. 
They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Mayfield with it once more. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Going with White here, toss left, and he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. I like the call. Inside the red zone, running the toss. Why? They want to get to the edges. They want to see if guys who don't normally make a lot of tackles are willing to actually do that. That usually means the guy's at the cornerback position. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Mayfield looks to throw. have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Patterson going to bring this out of the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. First down, here's Ritter. That's out wide here for Robinson. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Sometimes I forget how much information he has to go through before the ball's even snap. But what a diagnosis right there. Saw the play, shot through the gap like a rocket, ends up spilling it for a loss. Ritter throwing on third down. Escaping the pressure right. Ritter slides down, and he has enough for the first. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. But nowhere to throw it, decided to scramble, and a nice job, CD got the yardage that he needed. Yeah, and his teammates are certainly going to appreciate that effort, even if his coaches don't, because they would have wanted him to slide and protect himself. But he chose team gain over personal protection. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. From the 34-yard line, here's second and nine. Back to throw, Ritter. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. The 
11 yards there as they connect on the quick slam. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. Ritter. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing into coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Out of the gun, here's Ritter. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. One of the great coaches in football is a really simple game. Rush theirs, protect yours. And he's talking about those guys throwing the football. In this situation, the rush one, hitting the quarterback and forcing him into an incompletion. Sticking with a passing game. Here's Ritter again. And down he goes. A bucket air sack. Devin White with a big time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still could prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And we'll see what he can do on the return. It's a 39-yard punt, eight on the return, and they will take over first and 10. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Well, that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. And from the 34, here's second and four. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Rush coming, and he's taken down. They dial the corner blitz that time and it delivers to the tune of a nine yard loss well, their first sack of the game and it doesn't come from a usual suspect not somebody up front but charles a defensive back getting in there and i can tell you from experience he's beyond excited to make that play because you're exactly right is it normal to call his number to run at the quarterback like that usually you're defending the pass but he takes full advantage and dumps him to the turf On third down, Mayfield. This is White on the screen. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. Well, I see a defensive coordinator get upset and throw his headset. This is the kind of play that'll do it. You force third and long. This is almost sort of a give up play. You're just hoping to get something positive, and it winds up breaking big, and it convert on third down. Now a give up the middle. This is White to the 43, second down. From the 43, here's second and six. Mayfield down. Open man, it's Potter. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. Going right side is White. Inside the 30. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they 
come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? We just saw that on that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. They go play action. Mayfield on the throw. Let him too much that time. It's incomplete. Coverage was great everywhere that time. He tried to get it to his outlet, tried to get it to his running back, but sailed it a little bit too high and actually left his body open for a big hit. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game. Second and ten. Throwing. Mayfield. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Evans. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Mayfield. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. And his kick is indeed good, and that will double their lead as it's up to six. So he's got another field goal, his fourth now in the game. He's making it look easy out there. He certainly is, and they're always aiming for a swing of the leg that repeats under pressure, right? So nothing's different. He's got that right now because confidence is breeding confidence. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Patterson. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. Atlanta regains possession of the football. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. Ritter looking to throw on first and 10. And incomplete on the deep ball. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. 95 yards for rushing forward now to this point. The one the guys with the ball are having a whole lot of fun keeping it on the ground. The guys on the opposite side, they are having zero fun. They've been getting pushed around the entire game and haven't found an answer yet to slow down the running game. Third and short, Ritter. Uh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for Atlanta. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. Offense heading back out, and with them comes Rashad White. He's had a good third quarter. He likes whatever adjustments were made at halftime, whether those were team adjustments or just him talking to himself. And whatever that conversation was, it was pretty good because he is running really well here in the third quarter. But I like to think it is a team adjustment. Offensive line, those big escorts of his, they figured out how to block a little bit better, and he's found those holes to run through. He has indeed. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. 
an opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them, melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly. And that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. From the shotgun, it's Mainfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First time they've looked his way in this game. He comes through picking up the first. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. They'll go up the middle with White. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. And that's the type of run that they're looking for because they'll need to continue to rely on him to move the sticks in this tight game in order to preserve this lead. From Falcon territory now, here's first and ten at the 41. Opting to run again here with White. He'll get this down to the 38. Well, with a fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. On second down, they'll run with White. Finding his way down to about the 35-yard line. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Here's Mayfield. Out route and the ball is caught by Godwin. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. That's not the first time they've looked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long and they get the hookup again on third down to keep this drive alive. A first down throw from Mayfield. It's caught, this is White. Stopped at the 24 yard line after a gain of five. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting and they stopped him for a minimal gain. From the 24 now, here's second and five. Mayfield to throw it. And a catch right side by Evans. And Evans will have a Bucks first down as a tackle made at the 18. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Returns to his go-to, it's Evans. 12 more yards for him there, it's a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long, that throw no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm gonna keep firing. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. This is caught. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Payne Durham from six yards away. And the Bucs are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. And that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent.
percent or something it's just two scores but the way that this team has played to me what i've seen they absolutely deserve to win this game they've been the better team by far throughout now a toss coming right side it's white and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line i have to admit i love the excitement of the two-point try you know, to see what's going to happen, and, and it happens pretty quickly, doesn't it? You get an answer, and in this case, it was unsuccessful for the guys trying it. Completely unrelated. I just realized that I stole both of your pins in this last half of the game. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, partner. Hey, that's okay. Well, they, and, and just in the time they went for two. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready at their own 19-yard line. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. That's going to be caught by Pitts. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys you always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place sometimes your eyes can fool you how about that play action there and it sprang the big guy didn't it able to dump it over the top to him give him 10 that time escaping the danger running with it and picking up a first down well it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired well, he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. On first down, Ritter. He'll get this into the hands of Hodge. And he's got this down to the 35. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Robinson up the middle. And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. No surprise, Robinson is looking like one of the best running back prospects we've seen in a long time. He became the face of the Atlanta football team the second he was drafted. And he should be ripping off big runs for them for years to come. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Second and 10. Hand off now to Robinson. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Well, how many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. 
No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Defense simply not fooled by the draw there. Well, they were thinking run to begin with, and what they tell their defensive linemen is, play the run on your way to the quarterback. If someone shows, go get him, and that's exactly what they did. Out of the gun, they give to Robinson. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Well, sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two-score game, second half. You're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. And not going to get much better than this for an opportunity. Third and goal. Ritter with it. That ball is caught. It's London for the Atlanta touchdown. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Falcons have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. They start to drive with White. Good footwork at the 30. That's some good hard running there as he'll push his way forward for about five. From the 32-yard line now, here's second down and five. To throw, Mayfield. the mark incomplete they come up now third and five following the incomplete pass now Mayfield over the middle he finds Godwin complete and he is going to have a box first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. And that pickup on the first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They run straight ahead here with White. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down. Stay in bounds. Keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. 174 yards rushing now on 23 carries so far. Well, they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. 
It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. He was close to flirting with that sideline, but able to stay in bounds like you know his coach wants him to do and keep that clock moving. Isn't it funny that we're watching this play when we had that discussion just yesterday about this? What do you do in this scenario? What do you, you know, what's your mindset? It appeared to me that he'd totally forgotten that he needed to stay in bounds, and then the last thing is, oh no, I better, I better get down. two minutes and we've got a one score game not totally home free yet but it's looking good as they come up first and ten running behind center with Vaughn now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts it's just their first they've got two more to use here in the final stages You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. They defer to White out of the shotgun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. So first and second down went the wrong direction. They'll try to do better here on third and 13. They'll run again. And he'll only get this to the 17, well shy of what he needed. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to put him a touchdown and a two-point conversion up. And his kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. But from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, we kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? And put themselves in a good position but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. So now Ritter and the Falcons down by eight. A minute 45 to play. Needing to go pretty much the length of the football field as they have it first and 10. Now Ritter. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. They bring a man off the corner that time, and he gets home for a loss of six. I found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Back-to-back -back big plays defensively. First the sack, now they force the incompletion on third and long. Things looking pretty good for them. And this is where they have to be careful because they've got the momentum going their way. They will be really amped up to get to the quarterback. Look out, draw, screen, something that can be used against them. Able to find Patterson. And that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. They got the completion. Now, they probably had two plays called in the hole, so they've got to get to the line of scrimmage, get set, and run their fourth down play. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. Here's Ritter. That's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Picked up by Jamel Dean. And the Bucs will have solid field position. 
position here as they take over at their 45 yard line. Final minute, no timeouts at their disposal. Here's first and 10. Ritter. Got this complete to the tight end Pitts. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. This is where hustle and urgency come into play. I think you got to get up there and spike it. Here's first and 10. Ritter looks to throw it. And that one too wide and incomplete. Well, let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. Here comes second down. Throwing now is Ritter. That throw right side here going to be incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his own. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. They'll call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Here's Ritter. Charles, you know, they're just asking this crew for one more stop. And you know that they're feeling the momentum right now, but they have to be very careful oh, not to get over-exuberant, over-excited, and blow an assignment and give up the big first down. Fourth down, big play. Here's Ritter. And able to catch it, but he's out of bounds. And the throw took him beyond the sideline, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. Well, certainly not the way that they were hoping that possession would end, failing to convert on fourth. And now they've got to make sure that they keep their poise, they keep their confidence. Just because it didn't work once doesn't mean if they get that same situation later that they shouldn't go for it again. The defense feels great, but the offense, they can't be despondent. Down to one knee goes Mayfield, and that's all she wrote. So it's a win for the Bucs here. 